so look at the pictures of the Westinghouse factory. I noticed one of the buildings had what looked like like a, like a slightly elevated structure. I'm assuming maybe for a fact for a roof walkout or something like that. And I wanted to include one just for the fun of it. So I'm thinking about, you know, how do I do that? Well, what I decided to do, because of the fact that I wanted to kind of keep a similar brick pattern, you could do this a bunch of different ways. But what I did, since I had extra of the brick insert pieces, what I did, you can see here, I took four of the larger ones and I cut out for this door, which was really fun. This is that 1 8 MDF, so it's pretty tough. But I got it. That's a pike stuff door. And that's all I'm going to I was going to add a window. But I'm like, yeah, I don't have the patience or I don't, I don't feel like it. So there's no other windows on it. Just a simple walkout with a door. So those four pieces are glued around a 2-inch square piece of 1 8 task board with 10 by 10 northeastern scale lumber in the sides. And then they go all the way up. And then on top of those pieces, I put a 1 8th, I'm sorry, a 1 16th inch piece of task board notched for these. And then I glued in one of the smaller inserts. And then on the inside of the inserts, you can't see it now, obviously, but there's like an 8 by 8 piece, a smaller piece that the roof rests on, which is just a piece of that archival mat board. And then a piece of this corrugated stuff I got from my main man, Bill Schopf. Added a cap on top just to kind of keep the look similar to the main building. And that's it. That is, uh, <laughs> that's what we got. So, I, again, I know the brick is off a little bit because these were done with uh, Roberts. Is it Roberts, that mortar stuff? And some's better than others. But anyway, you know what? I don't, it's fine. So that's my little leftover piece uh, roof walkout. I think it'll look fine. Weathered it up, sealed it with some matte varnish and it's good to go this here is another thing i'm trying this is going to be for the base for a water tower if, if you look at the photographs and i'll show one real quick there's a water tower on it and it's kind of cool it's you know it's up there it's got a westinghouse logo on it which i had um order from cmr cmr products i have custom westinghouse decals in fact they're on their website anyone can buy them just look under westinghouse uh, I got four and five foot diameter, uh, the appropriate era for my layout on the water tower. It's going to be a titchy water tower. I have a 3D part that another friend of mine made for me. Anyway, that's a different project, but that's what that is for. So this, if I pan over here, I don't know how well this will show. This is the best photograph I have, and it's a blurry photograph. But there's the water tower. You can see there's the base for it. In fact, there's another one over here. That's empty. And again, I realize it's hard to see, but this is the best I got. So I just kind of figure, okay, yeah, it looks like it's kind of got a base on it. It's got a little cap. It's got four little corner pieces that stick up, probably to support the, the water tower legs. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a titchy water tower, probably not the whole height, only two of them, two of the three on the side pieces. This bottom piece is definitely a different shape than the titchy. It's got a little rectangular protrusion down here. So I had a friend of mine whip me up a 3D part to do that. So that will go with the titchy tank that I cut one of the sections off, the titchy roof, and then everything else titchy. And I do have that Westinghouse logo as well. Not that one. That's actually like up through World War II. I have the post-war, as far as I can tell, the post-war Westinghouse logo. So that's going to go somewhere. You can see how it's kind of sitting back behind what I think are their offices. So... I'm thinking of trying to put it somewhere on the roof. Alrighty, so here's the one, the other rabbit hole we're going into here with the uh, water tower. Let's see, I got things started again. I showed the, the base. That's where hopefully it's going to mount. I have the titchy kit going together. Um, you can see I cut off the bottom two, the bottom portion of it. It's only going to have two sections, I guess you'd call them. And I do have the guy wires and turnbuckles in there they're pretty much set up I have this together painted silver obviously with the the 3d base I'm cheating see the little nubs there they're gonna be to support the bracket or, I'm sorry the uh, the walkway 
I'm just not sure I want to put those little titchy things on there that come with the little supports. I'm just getting too damn lazy. So I have the decal on there. That's from uh, CMR Products. Custom decal. I had them designed for me. It's uh, it's it's set in. It's probably going to need to come back and poke some of the air holes and put a little bit more uh, micro sole on it. Uh, but again, I'm no decal expert, but I'm not going to touch it for a little while. Let that go. <laughs> Let that move along, let that dry a little bit, then I'll try to settle that in, then give it some dull coat. I do have the platform ready, the ladder. There, that's a freaking nitinoid pain in the rear end to do, but I have it. That's a template that comes from the Titchy site to kind of give the angles when you put this, the uh, supports in. So we'll see if that works. It does look pretty promising. If I take it, and the way I cut it, that's just, oops, see, just a piece of paper but it looks like it, and it moves a little bit but it looks like it's going to sit <laughs> he says you know relatively okay it should be all right on these on the four supports so i'll use that to try to line things up get everything glued up and then of course you have to add the other little what is it 010 i don't know what it is tiny little stuff guy wires on the other sides but that's where we are with that keep plugging away and Hopefully get out of this rabbit hole quickly so I can get this thing over on the layout. Alright, so here's the other rabbit hole I'm getting myself into on the main building. So like I showed you, it's got that Westinghouse lettering and logo on, on the one side of what I think is their office building. So I figured, of course, i got to try to duplicate that. So... <laughs> What I'm going to do is, I uh, was kind of struggling what I was going to come up with for the letters, but uh, good old Google, I found a, a, a I believe it's an architectural model, modeler. There's a lot of stuff in O scale and it has uh, letters available. And they're actually on eBay. He has an eBay store. So I went in there, kind of looked down through them. I don't know if this is an exact match, you know, font wise for what was on the building, but you know what? They had 3 8 inch high, kind of like an aerial block no serifs or anything from what I can tell from the blurry photograph this is close enough for me the size looks about right um, you know so I can put them on I've, I figured out how big to make the sign and, and, and the support for it and kind of the work above it I'm not gonna make it as ornate nearly as ornate as it is on the building with multiple steps and curved steps and a, and a circle you know half circle over this I can't do that I'm not good enough so I'm going to go ahead and make this, it'll be all square, gonna come in, jump up, come up, be a square around this. That's the custom decal uh, from CMR Products I'm going to use, because they did have the logo. The photograph has the older one, the pre-war, up through World War II emblem, Circle W is what we call that. That's the newer one, more for the era that I'm modeling, so I'm just going to use that decal. Put it on a piece of the pilaster material from the kit from the ITLA kit as a backing, you know, painted and glossed up and then decaled and then dull coated. I'm just going to stick that in there. So it's basically going to be a, a bunch of steps like that. I'll paint these letters. I'm, I can't tell from the photograph. Again, it's an old black and white blurry picture. It's an aerial photograph, so I zoom in, but the more you zoom, the blurrier it gets. Story of my life. So I'm, I don't know if they should be black. Or a you know kind of a blue color to try to match what's in the emblem, which I I might do. I think it would look look kind of cool. And I may have look on my bench. I may have a Tamiya spray paint that would make probably make it a lot easier if I could just kind of put those on some masking tape and spray them a color that's close to that. That might look pretty nice. So I want to get this moving along again. I don't want to spend years on this. So I'm gonna the material I'm gonna use. This is just the archival board just to set it on kind of plan things out. I have some 1 8 inch task uh, task board. <clears throat> I'm going to use that. Behind it, I might cut out like a 3 30 seconds, uh, you know, base wood just to kind of give it some support so it's not all, you know, flippy floppy when I get it mounted above the, the, the uh, part that sticks up on the front of the building. And then get it done, painted, glued in, and say, peace. Peace and victory, man, move on. So I want to try to get this done relatively quickly. So that's the... Uh, uh, that's the plan for the sign. We'll see how it all works out when we get it on the building. Alrighty, so for the 
let's make a sign rabbit hole I'm in. Here's what I'm going to do. I did kind of simplify this, but to me, I think it's going to look fine. I have the letters here. Again, I found them on eBay. They're three-eighths of an inch aerial block letters. I did paint them. Um, it's kind of, it's a Tamiya, uh, some blue thing I had on my shelf. I don't even know what color it is. Again, these letters, this type of material takes paint a little bit differently. But I kind of like the way it came out. It's kind of a real deep, uh, dark blue. It doesn't exactly match the blue in the emblem, which I was sort of trying for. And like I said, I can't really tell if on the real sign, because all I have is that blurry aerial black and white photograph that I can, you know, when I zoom in, it blurs too much. I don't know if they were dark blue or not. I don't know. They, they might have been black. Anywho. There's a little emblem I'm going to use. I'm just going to keep it square. Again, I, it, on, the, on the prototype, it definitely has a nice curve on it. I'm just not good enough to do that. I'm not going to worry about it. Letters on. I made all this little jig up. Um, I found like a Z piece. I didn't even know I had it. But it's almost perfect. It, it sets it off because I wanted these to be... This is a half inch with 3 H letters. So about a sixteenth on each side. And that's just about what that is. And what that lets me do because I'm not very good at doing this by eye. At least, you know, I'd, I'd get it across, and I wouldn't have room for the S. Well, the S is actually in already. The S is on dead center. The W is in on this end. The C is in on this end. All the other letters are just sit there for spacing. So they are adhesive backed. I'm going to lift them one by one. And like I said, with this jig, I can place them exactly flat on the bottom, which helps me. So hopefully this will look work out okay. Again, I may, with the C being in, and then just start with the I and go backwards. The S is in, the E is okay. There is a little hyphen there. So here's, here's the mock-up I made of it. And it sure looks like there's a little hyphen on the photograph. Now, maybe it's just a black dirt mark from, <laughs> from the real world, but it looks like it. I like it. I have it. I'm going to put it in. So, this is set up to go. Got some weights. These are here to level everything. Because I, I have a backing piece behind this to hold it because it broke off when I was <laughs> when I was cutting the wood piece. Oh, well. So, that's to hold that. So, this levels everything. Tape keeps my guide on the bottom down pretty good. And I think it's going to look pretty nice. Uh, it's painted the same color as the, you know, the trim, the concrete trim on the building. As is the back of this, and this is a separate little thing. This is I just took this out and dull coated it, so it's uh, I just wanted to sit there and see what it looks like, and I like it. So that's not glued in yet, but you see there's a little spot there where I will glue that on. So I'm going to let this. Oh, I don't even want to touch it. Continue to dry. Let the dull coat dry on that. Get the letters in. They're adhesive. Shouldn't take too long. Come back. Glue this bad boy in. Probably take everything out again, spray it, another spray coat, either dull coat or a matte varnish, you know, a flat matte coat over everything to kind of dull the letter. They're a little bit shiny, I think, but hopefully a nice matte varnish will tune them down, and then it's ready to go in the building. All right, more to come as I uh, try to extract myself from, uh, <laughs> from Let's Make a Sign Rabbit Hole. Okay, so having some fun here with the water tank rabbit hole, I decided to drag myself into. I think it's going to work okay. I have a little bit of an issue here. Uh, again, this is the Titchy water tower. Their small water tower. And I have it modified. Well, you see I have the Westinghouse decal on it. Which, eh, it looks okay. Not, not my greatest work. I'm not a great decaler, but once a year, you're back, you know, you're going to be like three feet away from this, so you're really hardly going to notice. So I can live with it. And the issue is, well, what I, <laughs> what I did because of the new 3D printed base that I have, it doesn't fit the top of the kit, you know, Titchy tank. It's designed to sit flat against the bottom, so I'm going to have to do something to that. But I, right now, I just have it sitting in there. In fact, if you're looking at that, and I don't know how well it shows on the camera, but I may be able, I could just super glue it across those things. You see how the the verticals here don't quite. They're not right, because they shouldn't hit this. They should go, actually go up a little bit further. Okay. So, 
I think what I can do, let me take this out carefully, see, because that's just sitting in there, and that's because of that, the design of the base. It isn't the same as the kit, and it won't fit on the top here. Now, I may, may, <laughs> be able to extend these angles if I have some small styrene angle, or maybe put another little box on top to set this into, I'm not sure yet. But the really amazing thing to me, and I don't know how well this is showing up, probably not very well, this assembly actually fits the base pretty good, and I can super glue it onto that. But this darn thing, yeah, that's the, the top two out of the Titchy kit. I actually built this freehand, <laughs> and it's actually not that bad. I, I'm really amazed. I started with the two that you get in the kit, with the, with the guys already in, as, as the, is recommended in the, in the instructions. And then I took, I held it, and I glued one of these across, <laughs> and one of these across, let it set up, laid it down, took to the other side, glued the other side in, using the angles on these pieces to give me the angle of the, of the you know, the way they're angled in. And <laughs> damn, it actually worked! So I got those in, and I, was, uh, I waited a little bit, turned it over, got the other side in, left this one off, laid it down, reached in, put the um, guy wires in on one side, lifted it up, glued the piece on, laid it the other way, and glued the other ones on. And by Jove, didn't it work? <laughs> it's actually, like I say, it's not that bad. It's going to fit the base. Again, I don't know how well it's showing up here on the camera. But it's going to fit okay. I'll be able to super glue that bad boy on there. And again, you're not going to be real close to this, so I'm not too worried. The only thing i got to figure out is how I'm going to get the tank, the new tank, to fit in there and look okay. But again, I probably could just let it sit there and super glue the damn thing in. And Yeah, it's not quite right, but you're going to be back so far, you're probably not going to notice. Uh, I do have the, the tube for the water supply line coming up, the vertical line. This is a 225 telescope into a 227. Because the 225, sorry, <laughs> the 225 is designed to fit into that. So that'll come up through. And that was originally in case I wanted to put a LED on the top. So I'm not going to do, I'm not going to worry about it. It doesn't look like the prototype had a light on it, but at least back in the 50s. So that'll come in. i got to figure out how I'm going to do something on the base. Do I want to... Uh, just try to cut it, you know, and get it right. I was thinking of drilling a hole in this, which I still could do. I'm not sure how well it would take drilling a hole in that. Or put another smaller block on there, maybe an eighth, a three sixteenth, something like that, with a hole in it that'll clear this. So then that, that'll give me some Kentucky vintage if I'm off. You know what I mean? Because if you go right to this flat thing, you either get it right you get it wrong. <laughs> you get it right where it sits and it's nice and flush. It's too long. Okay, you can sand it, but if you sand it too much, it's going to be sitting up like that. So anyway, so i got to figure out. I, I can tackle that. That shouldn't be the, that big a deal. So at least we got the the thing coming together. Of course, I do have the, the other ladder built. I have to run a ladder up the sides, which isn't going to match right. Again, because of this new base, it's not going to look quite perfectly, but I think it'll be far enough away, like I said, We'll be okay. All right, so let's continue down this rabbit hole and see if I can get out of this one. All right, about to wrap up this rabbit hole, bury it, and never go down another one again, <laughs> he says. All right, so here's the water tower. I took it out, took this outside last night, got it painted with, uh, what is it, to me, a silver color I have. Eh, it looks okay. We've got the base. We have the freestanding support we got the water tower with a 3d printed base not the best because because uh, of the base um, I should have done a little bit better job you know modifying the railing and uh, how it fits but eh, whatever but I did paint the top finial a nice Westinghouse blue just for some fun that's the water pipe gonna come out I'm gonna take this super glue it into that hopefully get it nice and straight then take that assembly set it on top of this and for this all I did was run around another little square 
of the same angle pieces that were from the the drop from the bottom section I didn't use because they look you know kind of the same so that was gonna just rest on it it looks okay I'm not saying it's perfect but again we're definitely going for the two two and a half foot rule on this one and then when that's on that this will come onto here get super glued and then it's ready to go on the building all right let's uh, get it together and see how it looks all right here it is good enough ready for the uh, top of the building I took it out and I gave it a really light spray of um, the Vallejo German field gray just to kind of tone it down a little bit and so it's you know it's definitely still a silver color and but you know anything out in the environment especially this on top of the roof you're not going to be up there worried too much about the paint on it so I think it looks okay let me just zoom in again I'll zoom in more than anyone will ever see this because it's obviously not the greatest assembly job you see it's just kind of sitting in there with a little bit of splotch of super glue holding it <laughs> there's the Wesley Nelson emblem and the ladder let me uh and it's probably going to sit you're probably not going to view it this way it's probably actually going to sit on the layout on the top of the building i should say like that so you'll see that ladder there because the the viaduct comes along the let me zoom back here quickly the viaduct comes along this side so i figured that'll be visible for folks coming in and out of the factory over the viaduct and I put the ladder here on the back side which is which is wrong I mean see, here's where there's a major mistake you see that ladder doesn't come anywhere near the opening on top of the platform because you know I didn't take into account the additional height with the with the new cylindrical you know base on the bottom of it now I could have brought a little bit of ladder down here and make but you know what you forget it because it's gonna sit back like this and you're going to be pretty darn far away. So I figured, you know what, that's fine. That, just leave it go. You're going to see there's a ladder there and go, ooh, ah, nice, and then move on. So, Okay, so that is it. That is how we did it. Another rabbit hole completed. And now it's ready to go onto the building. Oh, boy, we got us a building sign. All right, there it is. I like it. Is it perfect? No. Is it exactly per the prototype? No. Am I really worried about it? No. <laughs> I think it looks pretty damn good. I really do. I'm, I'm happy. So all I have to do now, and I'll, well, let me just zoom in so you can see the Westinghouse glory. Oh, I like the color. I think that turned out fine. The spacing I got, you know, okay, I went letter by letter. Eh, it's not bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> perfect but eh, what is and again that logo is a, a 1950s vintage you know era prote era prototype accurate logo that the Westinghouse Corporation was using based on the photographs I've seen from that era around the plant and on rail cars and whatnot so yeah I, you know to, for me I, I can't get much more accurate than that so all right now all I need to do is add the upper level trim pieces because I didn't have them in quite yet I'm not gonna worry about putting them up on the sign but the two sides and a little bit there get those glued on and this bad boy is ready for the layout alright here we are the two rabbit hole adventures finished and wrapped up ready to go so we got the sign there in the front water tower is gonna sit like that in the back so I'd probably have the emblem face on the viaduct, which would be over on that side. So there you go. Oh, I can't forget my little roof walkout, too. The little side scratch build project. <laughs> All right, there we go. You see I added this little pipe here off the water tower. I don't know why. It just looks kind of cool and pipey. And that kind of runs down the building here, and maybe it's a way they can... I don't know, get water out of the water tower, fill the water tower. I don't know. It is, I had that stuff. I said, you know what? I'm going to use it because I'm getting toward the end of things I'm going to build. At least I think. All right. So that is that. Water tower, sign, roof walkout. 
Let's get this thing on the layout. Ba-ba-da-ba-ba